Hello, sportsmen. Hey, spring is here. It's here officially. You can feel it in the air. We've gotten more requests this year and more questions about smelt dipping. You know that feature we did? In fact, we did this back in 1992 of catching smelt during the day on a secret little stream. Well, we're going to revisit that smelt feature. A lot of people want to see it. They're curious. I'm going to give you some tips on how to find a stream like that. You stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with tips on how you can become a more practical sportsman. I don't know what to say. Pete Berger said he thought we were too late. Smelt had been in the streams a week ago, but for the past two days, nothing. He said we could walk down to a little upper peninsula creek that used to be good in years past, but he didn't hold out much hope today. Oh, I see him in there now. Yeah. You can go right up ahead of me in that mix there. Oh, yeah, they're bunched in there. This where I always get. Here's a spot, huh? Oh! Oh, oh Peter! My, my, look at this. Well, once again, we hit it. Yep. I can't believe this. <laughs> During the day, oh, tasty little things. Oh, Pete is going to get back in there, I can tell. There they are. You all set? Sure. Look at that. Now, while he's... Emptying that, I'm going to go in for a dip. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Pete, we're going to be done here in just a, just a few seconds. Yep. Smelt dipping during the day, not something you can count on, but when you find it, it's fabulous. I think more of them are down here a little farther. Oh, I just... Happy. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There's some nice ones in here, too. Oh, yeah. Did you see? This is still early for the run in this respect. Most of the time, when you get near the end of the end of the run, the the smelt are a lot bigger. There, you get them big males. Mm -hmm. That's a small one. That's a small one right there. Remember how I got the big one? Oh yeah. yeah. That's, right there. that's a small one. And that's a male right there. You can. Yeah. The huh. male smelt. Let's see what else we got in here. They were small. That's a male. Smell. When I squeezed the belly and whitish milt came out, the smelt was a male. If a few eggs appeared, I'd know it was a female. These all appear to be males. I wonder if they all are. These are all males. We could have filled our buckets right here, but downstream, the smelt were even thicker. This is unbelievable. We, we were just dipping upstream there, got this bucket full, and there weren't, weren't a smidgen of the smelt that there are right here. Wow. What do you think, John? You want me to go in and take a dip full? Yeah, let's try it. Look at them up there in that, uh, ahead of that log. Well, I'll sneak in here. They'll probably scatter a little bit, but... Oh, this is going to be obscene smelt dipping. Oh, this is just... Can you imagine at night when they're in here? There we go. Oh, there is a, a net full of smelt. Oh my goodness. I tell you, but you know, this is enough smelt right here. Look at them scattering all through here. This is enough smelt here as far as I'm concerned for, for the year for me and my family. But I don't need it. I have more than that in the bucket. So I'm going to practice catch and release. You know, if you don't need them, why keep them? Look at that. I wouldn't mind getting a, dipping a master angler smelt here if I could find one. Something for a trophy awards. But there don't seem to be any huge ones. Oh, a few of them left in the net. This is something else. But look, they just keep right on coming and moving right up through. The smelt weren't really running right now like they do at night. They were holding their positions in the stream. The spawning activity begins after dark. Well, they're thick in here, Pete. Yep. See, look at here. Pete's bucket is empty now, but that'll change in a flash. You can probably get those right down there. Are you ready? Two minutes. Yeah. We're ready.
Can't hear anymore. That's a five gallon pail full. You guys got any containers to put them in? No, we. I, this is plenty for us, Pete. I mean, we really don't need okay. all that many. But look at that. That's, for a lot of people, that's a whole night's dipping right there in that one. Oh. There they go. That was just about a full of vegetables. No kidding, it sure was. All more than five gallon tail I don't know really how many more we need. I can get some more right in here. Right there you can go. Yeah. Walk in with your, uh, hey? Yeah. Okay. Walk in with your dipper and go ahead there. And you'll be in shallow water. Oh, yeah. This is something else up here, John. Make it right there. Yeah, this is, th this is thicker with smelt, and I'm closer to them than I've ever been. Even when we did that dipping before. This is going to be something else. Oh, man. I don't know what to say, but this is definite overindulgence in smelt. Huh? Yeah, well, I guess... Why don't you take a picture of this, Tim? How, how much do we need, John? I think we have enough. I mean, how much do you need, Tim? Do, do, do we need this dip? We don't need it? I tell you, some of you folks that wished you had smelt like this, and I'm going to put them back for you. There they go. Wow. Yeah, maybe we'll get a few more. Yeah, we'll take a few more. I remember dipping too many smelt. Tim Farragon remembers years when he brought home more than he cared to clean. So this year, we were prudent and practical about how many we wanted to take home. Sure, they're loaded in the stream right now. Sure, they're easy to dip. There's no limit. And sure, we might not see this again for years, maybe never again, but that's no excuse for being a fish or game hog. You know, at times like this, you have to ask yourself, why do I hunt and fish? Why am I here? Is it to take everything I can up to the limit just because I can? Well, I wanted to take a dip or two like this just to see what it was like, but none of us needed that many more smelt. Pete Berger told us that he had some friends, though, who wanted more smelt, so we should at least fill up our bucket. But there was no point in taking more than that because, in all likelihood, they'd spoil before anybody cleaned them. And to me, conservation is wise use of what's available, but not overuse. That's a bucket full. If nobody finds out where this little Upper Peninsula stream is, the smelt will be there during the day next year. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not telling. <laughs> Everybody wants to know where that little creek was. Well, I can't tell you. I could tell you. I'm not going to tell you because it would ruin it. It would ruin it for several reasons. But I will show you how to find a place like that. Go to a, an atlas and gazetteer here on the back. Well, I will show you we were in this area here, section 91, around Manistique. That's the general area we were. If you open up the map book, you can find lots of little creeks. Up here at the top, here's three of them that come in. Uh, look down here along the, uh, well, into the Garden Peninsula. A number of creeks. Now, that white area right near the shore, that is private land. The green area designates public land. Find the bridges that cross these creeks, and you just have to check them because those smelt aren't there all the time. But that's the way to get them during the day. Check the bridges. Make sure you're on public land. Uh, good luck to you. And, of course, get a good smelt recipe, and you'll be real happy with the results. The traditional way to cook smelt is to fry them, and they're really hard to beat that way. But William Wiswell from Grand Rapids sent us a recipe he calls smelt melt. That's a unique way to use these little critters. He starts with a pound and a half of smelt. He removes the fins and the backbones. Then he steams them until the flesh flakes apart. Or if you have home canned smelt, just drain them off. Don't steam them. They're already cooked. Flake that delicate smelt in a bowl. Add three tablespoons of diced celery, three tablespoons of diced red onion, three tablespoons of Miracle Whip, two teaspoons of prepared mustard, a little salt, pepper, and oregano. Now mix that up. Spread it on slices of toast. Top it with some slices of mozzarella cheese. 
put it on a cookie sheet, pop it into a preheated 375 degree oven until the cheese melts. I mean, who wouldn't like this? You can find Bill Wiswell's Smelt Melt in the upcoming Outdoor Digest magazine or print it off our website, www.fredtrost.com. If you don't fill your nets with smelt this season, and rarely is smelt dipping that easy, you can prepare smelt melt with canned salmon, tuna, or other canned fish. But try it. It's a great way to serve some of the fish you catch. Hunters ask Mark Raymond a lot of questions about keeping their hunting dogs healthy. But here's a question about human health as well. I'm concerned about my dog picking up deer ticks and transmitting Lyme disease. What should I do? Lyme disease is a problem in Michigan, but nothing that's running rampant. The deer ticks are out there. You have to be careful. Check your dog over when you come back in from running. If you've got a short-haired dog, check them over for ticks when you get back in. But the deer tick is a very small tick, very hard to see. The best thing to do if you're concerned about this, they have a vaccination out there, a vaccine that is a two-step process. You give them their first shot, and then two weeks later, the second one, and they're good for another year. You give them an annual booster after that. So if you want to protect your dog, use that. The best advice I can give you is to contact your vet. If you're concerned about this, get the shots for the Lyme disease, protect him for that, and find out what other new products that they may have out on the market today. Your vet would be able to help you on that to select what products are right for you and protect you and your dog. There you go. Now that's that's the kind of fish we're supposed to be catching, guys. Charlie. No! Oh, no! People are funny when it comes to fish, especially when they can't catch them. They tend to say it's because the fish outsmarted them. But hold it. We're talking about a cold-blooded fish. Even though they travel in schools, I've never seen a fish read or write. I asked Professor Fins what he thought. Are fish really smart? I think that they uh, have such a small degree of uh, smartness, it's almost unmeasurable. Uh, they have basic instincts and basic patterns that they go after, which the environment teaches them to do. So it's up to the fisherman that is the one that's up to be smart. The fish isn't smart. It's up to the fisherman to, to uh, be smart and learn that environment and learn those basic instincts and those patterns that the fish have and then duplicate that. Uh, the fish doesn't know what a hook is. Uh, I have what uh, my granddaughter calls a magic hook. It's just a, a gold-plated hook. And four, five, six-inch bluegill is usually off a dock, just a plain gold-plated hook jigged with no bait anything added to it. Uh, my daughter or my uh, granddaughter has caught as many as uh, 25, 40 bluegills in a half an hour of time right off the dock, but nothing more than a gold hook. In the same way with trout sometimes, just the, just the movement and the flash, and there isn't a fish around that knows what a hook is. And don't worry if people tell you to hide the hook in the bait, anything like, like that, make sure the tip is covered, forget it fish has no idea what a hook is. Now that I've done with law school, I've taken the bar exam, it's time to dig into some of the issues that I think sportsmen are. Spooky fish to, uh, to haul out of a Michigan lake. What, what lake was this? This is a local gravel pit. Local gravel pit where there's somebody in the area who has a rather twisted sense of humor. What kind of fish is this? This is a black piranha. Very nice. Do many people swim in that gravel pit? Not that I know of. <laughs> ah, that's weird. Look at that, the mouth on that baby. I, you know, they don't have apparently tremendous teeth, but I guess they can just rip the flesh right off your bones. Yeah. So uh, somebody must have planted this in there, huh? Yeah, it probably got too big for their aquarium and just dumped it in. Very nice. You know, these things, do you suppose they live through the winter? I probably just dumped it in the, in the spring, and then I caught it in about June. Hmm. What did you catch it on? Um, on a minnow with a bobber from shore, about four feet under the bobber. I was fishing with my cousin Adam, and he really didn't hit it. He just kind of ran with it. He didn't take the bobber under, just slid around. And I set the hook. 
He got in the weeds, pulled him up, jumped out of the air, got him in, and then the hook got off. But nope. he was on land. Okay, so he was on the land. Was he, like, snapping his little mouth? He was just flopping around. Did you pick him up? No. Did you know what it was? I thought it was a sheep head. But uh, it's it's not one that you'd want to, you know, like lip, put your thumb in there. Ooh, that would be a surprise. When did you find out it was a piranha? We took it to a pet shop, and they said it was a black piranha. Hmm. Did they say that that was kind of dangerous to have someone around in a gravel pit? Yeah, and somebody else caught one in there, too. An inch bigger? Mm-hmm. My. I imagine there's dog bones and, and that's strewn all over the bottom. That is that is kind of spooky. Yeah. Well, it, what did the, you, the DNR knows about this? We didn't no? tell them or nothing. It's too good. You didn't tell them? It's too good a fishing lake. We don't want them to come in there and destroy the rest of the fish that's in there. Because the, the kids Hold it. The, Hold ki- it. the kids fish there every day. Him and his buddies, they go there and, and they're always catching bluegills and bass. Huh. So we didn't say anything to the DNR because we don't want them to come in there and poison the lake. And poor kids won't have any place to go fishing, you know. Well, there's another alternative. What's that? You could invite him to come swimming. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's bad. That's really bad. That I was just, just making a joke. That's all there is to it. Well, anyway, we do have a, a very strange fish here. And uh, golly, Ryan, I don't know what to say. You're quite a well-rounded fisherman to catch fish that aren't even on the list. Way to go. Congratulations. Ryan Wynn, Bill Wynn. Super.